The BBC documentary, The Truth About Carbs. Now, some people really, really got their panties in a twist when they saw this. However, other people seem perplexed that anyone saw controversy in it at all. So of course, I decided to watch it and I've decided to offer some critique for those of you who are interested. In the interest of being concise, I'm going to discuss body composition only and we'll skip over the rest because you don't want to watch me watch an hour long documentary. That would be boring as fuck. Let's go. Carbohydrates, we love them. But newspaper headlines keep telling us how bad they are for our health. Newspaper headlines do make all sorts of crazy claims, so let's take that with a pinch of salt. Are they the killer, as claimed by many, responsible for record levels of obesity and diabetes? So, I hate to interrupt this early and point out the obvious, but what you see eating there is cake. Uh, cake. Yes, obviously high in carbohydrates, but also high in dietary fat. Now, some of you might think that I'm being a bit too pernickety with this, but it's an important distinction because a lot of people view junk food as high carb, but completely overlook the fact that they are also high in dietary fat. So for example, cakes, biscuits, donuts, chocolate, ice cream, all of these are high in carbs, but they are also high in fat. Just pointing that out before we start. Well, those the white carbs. Once you've eaten them, both starch and sugar get quickly broken down into a smaller molecule called glucose, and that gets dumped into your bloodstream where your body uses it for energy. But if you eat too many carbs, then that glucose can be stored as fat, and that's what's given carbs a bad name. So without getting into the nitty gritty of de novo lipogenesis, what he is saying is technically correct. If you consume too many carbs, someone is going to put on weight. But likewise, if someone consumes too much dietary fat, they are going to put on weight as well. So it isn't strictly a carbohydrate issue, it is a calorie issue in general. But it's not all bad news. There are some kinds of carb that we're not getting enough of. Fruits, and vegetables like these all contain fiber. And fiber is a kind of carbohydrate. It releases energy very slowly. It's there. very good for our guts. People and so stuff like this doesn't tend to make us fat. Now we can call the fiber green carbs, but remember everything um, in this basket now, is carbs. Now, green veg not making us fat is due very largely to the fact that the calorie content of it tends to be minimal. So for example, if I pull up the nutritional information of broccoli and put it up there, you'll notice that per 100 grams, you're only looking at around 30 calories. So for you to consume excess amount of calories from green vegetables, you would basically have to consume, let's carry the two, like a metric fuckload of vegetables. So before the next clip, I'm going to warn you, this whole segment is the bit that, from what I've seen, has caused the most controversy. In my opinion, this is the part of the show that I think is the most, if I'm being diplomatic, I'm going to say confusing. If I'm being honest, I'm going to say intentionally misleading. So, you're going to see what I mean in a sec. So just where do all these white and beige carbs lurk in our food? Well, looks can be deceiving. Dietitian Alison Barnes wants to show a group of office workers just how much energy in the form of sugar these carbs release into their bloodstream. Okay, so I've lined no, up the selection of foods. Carbs We've got a into bagel and a chocolate muffin. Okay, so I would say that that, that is more sugar than this one. Maybe two of cubes of that one. We're calling this blood bagel. sugar bingo. Can our volunteers guess the equivalent cubes of sugar in each of these foods? Now, this is the important bit because they are discussing sugar equivalent, i.e. how much sugar are these foods broken down into once in the body. Now, this obviously isn't the same thing as how much sugar is in these foods. So, for example, let's say you have a very sugary food, but you have a starchy food with no sugar in it. Assuming the same carbohydrate content, they would put the same number of sugar cubes next to each food. But breaking sources of carbohydrate down into number of sugar cubes is, it's like looking at all the properties of that food for a straw 
and basically overlooking every other factor other than carbohydrate content. What do you think? Yeah, let's... Five to make let's it... Go, let's go five. So okay. obviously, so the chocolate muffin the, does have the more muffin sugar than the bagel. So we've gone for the muffin as the slightly bagel. high one. I'm just going to add to that. Oh, oh, what? Well, this is good in that it tends Double. to promote oh caloric awareness. Okay. Okay. So ten sugar cubes in that muffin. This one, so you've gone for two, so it's more starchy, less sugary. Yeah, that's okay. Yes, that's what we're guessing. Yeah. But so let's because they're doing how much sugar oh. it converts to oh. in the body. Wow. What yeah, you're about to see is them Same looking the like a bagel as well as a muffin. More sugar. Oh. So there's eleven sugar cubes oh. equivalent okay. in this bagel. I'm shocked. I won't lie. I'm shocked. Really? Yeah. What you're saying is that in the bagel, when you eat it, you chew it up and start to digest it, your body is breaking that starch so down breaking into down that into quantity of sugar. The equivalent of sugar, yeah. So yeah. the important exactly. thing is here is the carbohydrate content of the foods in themselves isn't necessarily problematic when you are separating it from the caloric content of food. So sure, you might say that a bagel has more carbohydrates than a muffin, but a muffin is significantly more calorie dense, as you can see from these comparisons. This is a, a portion of white equivalent. rice, and then you've got a nice bowl of strawberries. The rice. Yes, let's go Strawberries, for primarily five. sugar, Never but actually sugar very, very low quantities. Kind of a decent dieting fruit, if you will. Put half of that bowl. <laughs> <laughs> they are sweet. Yeah. Rice, on okay, the other so hand, in this amount of strawberries, there is <gasps> four sugar cubes. Mm, wow. So, yeah, so although they taste sweet, actually the amount of carbohydrate that they contain is, is quite small. So let's That's compare fair. that to this portion of rice then. No. So you've gone for five, so just let me... What I'm going to do, oh, wow. I'm just going to do this. I'm not eating rice oh, again. <laughs> Oh, I'm oh not eating God. rice really? again. It's grains of sugar that we're eating. Okay, I'm not eating rice no more. So in case you didn't hear it, one of the people they're demonstrating to has said they are not going to eat rice again. Now, of course, she is probably saying this with a light-hearted attitude, but the point is, out of all the foods they've looked at, the shock factor is what she's getting from rice, not the fucking chocolate muffin, the rice, because they're using a, a, a misleading metric by saying here is the sugar equivalent. Of course, rice is lower in sugar than a chocolate muffin. It is more nutritious than a chocolate muffin. It's less processed than a chocolate muffin. But by doing this kind of shock demonstration, it's the bowl of rice that is scaring the people who are, who are looking. Yeah, so that is, that's 20 sugar cube equivalents. Jack of potato. Yeah. Can you not that's do that? It's my favourite food, potato. <laughs> I would go with... Similar to the bagel, yeah? yeah it's like about 10. You've got quite a good poker face, Alison. <laughs> <laughs> so, in fact, there's, there's 19 sugar cubes wow. in this, in this really? jacket potato. It's almost, <gasps> almost double what you thought. Oh, I'm so sorry, I'm going to cry. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> I'm, I'm yeah, sure. Yeah, it's yeah. a shock where, where they're hiding all the sugar. So, what we're doing is making people paranoid about potatoes. Out of all the foods, even the foods they've got on that table, chocolate, muffin, bagel, the potato is the one that has the most shock factor for the people that are looking because the metric they're using is bullshit. So potatoes in the satiety index have the highest rated satiety index out of every food they looked at, which means that when you have boiled plain potatoes, they are more filling calorie for calorie than any of the other foods that they examined. So potatoes on their own, aren't something that people tend to overeat. If you think about it, people consume chips, crisps, things like that, where there's salt and extra fat. Plain potatoes, either people have a jacket potato with a filling, or they will use butter and oil in seasoning, but actual plain potatoes, just the carbohydrate content of potatoes, is not problematic. Yet, in this demonstration, the people who are watching are freaked out by the sugar equivalent content of potatoes and rice. Really, out of all the foods they could put on that table, they're going with potatoes and rice as the ones to deliver that shock value. This, to me, is... I can't fucking get my head around it. I think one of the, one of the key things to take away from this is that looks can be deceiving. So, just because a food doesn't necessarily taste sweet, 
doesn't mean that there's not going to be sometimes an awful lot of sugar going into your, your system after you've eaten it. The thing that this really rounds home for me is that there is a huge amount of energy in a potato yeah. and that <laughs> pile of glucose there that will, your body will turn the potato into will be stored as fat unless you burn it off. Unless you so burn it off. You have to be careful Which about again, what you're putting Again, it's the same for all calories, not necessarily just carbohydrates. So why not start to become clever about the carbs you eat? by reducing some of the white and beige carbs, like potatoes, pasta, and the white bread. We all handle carbs a little sure. differently, yeah. and it's important to eat a balanced diet. But if you're trying to lose a little weight, then it's worth considering the type of carbs you're eating, and not just obsessing about calories. See, I think this is fair. Now, calories are going to be the most important thing to control when it comes to body weight. However, you can change the quality of carbs in your diet and not obsess over caloric intake. So for example, if you swap bread, rice, pasta for vegetables, you will lower your caloric intake even if you're not actually tracking your caloric intake. And there is good research to support that if people focus on diet quality, they can reduce their caloric intake. Now the caveat to this is when comparing low carb to low fat conditions, low carb doesn't actually outperform low fat when focusing on diet quality. So yes, you can change the quality of carbs in your diet and get better fat loss and health outcomes, but you can also do the same with low fat dieting. So again, this isn't a carbohydrate issue, this is a calorie issue. So to summarize this, when criticized, the presenter of the program on Twitter said that the goals of the program were to get people eating fewer processed carbohydrates, which is fine, getting people to prioritize fruit and vegetable intake, which again is fine. And if that was the take home message of the program in itself, I think it'd be very difficult for people to argue with that. So in terms of the take home message, yes, you can swap refined carbohydrates for more fruits and vegetables. And yes, you will probably improve your diet quality improve weight loss and improve health outcomes. Now, the issue with this and the documentary as a whole is they tend to take the angle of demonizing carbohydrates, whereas in reality, it's actually calories in general. So for me, although I think the take home message is fine, I think there are segments in the show that promote unnecessary carb phobia. So the idea that someone would look at a potato or look at a bowl of rice and say, oh my God, the sugar equivalent of that is too high is absolutely crazy because out of all the things you're gonna get people to avoid eating on their diet, are you really going for rice and potatoes? Like it seems fucking ludicrous. Like sure, start with the junk food, start with the cakes and the donuts and things like that. But rice and potatoes, you can leave alone. People don't tend to overeat these foods in isolation until they add something else to it. So I think the take home message is fine, but I think the vehicle they use to do it is very, very one-sided. And this is one of the things that's promoted the controversy. So that's it. I hope you found it interesting. Please feel free to leave your comments. Thank you.